Welcome back to the Trail Tech Shop. This week I have a lot of parts to install on the Project Mud Racer, so without too much time wasted, let's get into it and start installing them. With the beefed up Mud and Wheels Torque Series rear diff installed and linked up to our Rubber Down Customs diff brace kit, we've got serious strength out back. Adding to this are my brand new track motive HD axles on all four corners, making the driveline strong enough to accept all that Mr. RPM power we're gonna be sending to the wheels. And if you remember, I left off the front upper A-arms. Why, you might ask? And the answer is pretty simple. No, it's not so that you can see what I'm doing better. It's so that I can take all of the front suspension componentry off and replace it with high clearance arms from Super ATV. Finding Gen 1 high clearance arms can be a real struggle. Everyone's on to Gen 2s, but Super ATV still makes this tried and true setup. While it won't fit Max models, it works with everything else, and man, does it make a big difference. It's made from 25% larger diameter tube at 1.25 inch thickness. They're beefy, strong, and they come as a full set of four. I've also opted for the Super ATV bushing kit as it's a good idea to start with new at this point, especially seeing as ours look to be the originals and the kit is so inexpensive to buy. On top of being really strong and adding more clearance underneath the bike, these high clearance arms will actually allow you to run up to a 30 inch tire with nothing more than just doing the arms on a stock bike. That means no lift at all, and that's how we're gonna run this rig. Yes, we have big rubber to go on, but as a race bike, we wanna keep it as low of a center of gravity as possible while still keeping good ground clearance. These arms do all of that. The adjustable pivot block also means you can fine tune the tire angle to keep your wheels aligned. Oh, they also take your stock ball joints if they aren't beat, which mine were, so I ordered a set of factory replacements to tighten up the front end. In the way of suspension, I wanted to change out the 8,000 mile stockers because they were completely beat. Now, keeping in mind that I'm building a 2008 Gen 1 and not a 2017 Gen 2, I wanted to use shocks that would give me all the performance that I'm looking for and none of the extras I don't need. I called Elka to find out what they recommended. I suggested using Stage 1s all the way around, but I'm glad I spoke with them as their sponsored mud racers like using Stage 2s in the rear and Stage 1 up front. These are hand-built and shock dyno tested to verify they're built properly. And surprisingly, they are very reasonably priced coming in cheaper than what you'd probably pay for a new stock shock setup from the dealership. Both feature dual rate springs for my riding weight and the stage twos add in a rebound clicker so we can fine tune the speed at which the rear shocks return to full extension. Something I'm told is important when mud racing. And should we ever put on some less aggressive tires and go for a weekend drip on the trails? Well, these are gonna deliver excellent on-trail ride quality. Now something I know you're all gonna like and I think is gonna completely change the way that this buggy looks is wheels and tires. Sure, we could race just about anything, even the stalkers would be fine for having fun, but we're looking for ultimate performance, and after talking with the pros, I think I found the right combination. Seeking the ultimate skinny profile with a maximum lug depth, I went for the Super ATV Assassinator. With a three inch lug, you're talking about the gnarliest and most aggressive mud tire out there. And at only eight inches wide all around, we're gonna cut through the mud with ease and shed the excess thanks to a self-cleaning design that won't kick up or get full. So let's throw them on a 7.5 or 8 inch wide rim and be done with it, right? Nah, I can't do that. And Rubber Down Customs helped me out with a set of their beautiful 14 inch Swamp Locks rims. With powder coated to match bead locks, these are some seriously aggressive rims. Three piece in design and incorporating a built in air valve on the rim, the Swamp Locks 14 inch crush locks are impressive. They come with all the hardware to start your crush and complete it, right down to the valve stem and aluminum covers. This set is Rubber Down's aluminum 14 inch version but you can get a 12 inch aluminum or both 12 and 14 inch steel versions at a lower cost. To keep rotating mass lower, we opted for 14 inch and all aluminum. It's a bit of an interesting process having never done this before, but it's straightforward as you work around the rim to lock the bead to the center aluminum disc. Once I got the hang of it, well, it still took a little while, but the finished product is insanely aggressive. I've never run crush locks before and I didn't really even understand how they were designed, but now I know them, I understand it, and I think this is gonna be a winning setup. Installation makes me realize just how much narrower this bike is gonna be. Possibly in the future we'll add a spacer, but for now we'll run it as is. The 29.5s are really tall once we crush them out, and unlike a conventional tire and rim combo, when you add air, it really doesn't do a whole lot. After dropping the build back to the ground after what seems like an eternity up in the air, I'm pretty pleased with it. The Project Mud Racer is looking crazy aggressive, and it makes me wanna jump on board and go for a rip right now but I got a few pieces that I'm waiting to arrive that I think are really gonna set this thing off. So the build will continue. This segment is just the start for you. 
Click the subscribe button and become part of the Dirt Tracks Nation where you'll have access to tons of great content from all of the years past of our great stories, trail techs, and test rides.